Amabad. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome one more time to the house of Dua. Welcome to the channel from which you learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his creation, his message, and his beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, and of course, his chosen religion of Al-Islam. Welcome to the channel from which you learn how to reach out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your supplications, supplications for your needs, supplications for your aspirations, and supplications against those things that you fear so badly in the life we live. And of course, welcome to the channel from which you learn how to succeed in the life we live now, and how to succeed even better when we meet Allah on the day of accountability. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the channel from which we have been coming to you with verses and revelations from the Quran that guide us to how to live happily in the life we live, how to avoid some of the difficulties we have, how to live a better life so that we'll be happy, how to seek relief to the challenges we are facing so that those challenges will be replaced by the joy of life, the joy of life that will give us hope that even our meeting Allah on the day of accountability will be better for us. Indeed, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it good for you and make it good for me. Welcome to the house of Dua. Today, I'm overjoyed. I'm happy. Alhamdulillah, I cannot begin a better way, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, than by reciting a few verses from the Quran. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <speaking in Hebrew> Afa ima ta kutila kalabtu ala kabiku Oman yan kalimu ala kibe Falan ya dura la hashean Osa ya jazila hu shakiri Bismillahi Ramani Rahi Muhammadu Rasulullah Walazina mahu ashida alal kufar ruhama hu bena hu tara hu ruka sujeda yabta guna fadla mina lahi waridwana sima hu fi wujuhi mi asari sujud zalika matuhu fi taurat wa matuhu fi injin kazari akraja shati hu fazaru Fasta glaza, fasta wa ala suki. Yojibu zura ali yagiza bihimono kufar. Wada la ulazina manu wa milu swaliyat. Mini huma kweretan wa jeran azima. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Makana muhamadu. Abba ahadim min rijalikum walaikin walaikin rasulallah waka ataman nabiyin waka ana lahu bikulli shayin alima bismillahirrahmanirrahim wa zikola isa abunu maryam ya bani israila 
Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, the final messenger and of course the final prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, another year, another month of Rabi'u Awal, and another day, another opportunity for us to remember the birth of the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. There can be no greater figure among humanity than Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, who was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rahmatan as a mercy to the entire mankind. To carry the nur of Allah, the light of Allah, ya dilahu lenure man yasha. Allah grants his light to whoever he wants to grant. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, today I have the unique privilege to come to you with a reminder that we are now again in the month of Rabi'un Awa, the month that the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was born, the month of the event popularly known as Maulud in the Big Year, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, today is not a day for controversy. Today is a day for you to decide whether you are among those who want the name of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam to be forgotten and be obscured in the history of mankind, or you are among those who want the name of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam to be remembered, to be exalted, to be esteemed in the life we live. The choice is yours. And you know what? The best way to follow the example of the Holy Prophet Muhammad and to keep him in your mind and to remember him daily in and out is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following the example of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. But there are certain things you don't just want to forget. We as human beings, we don't even want to forget our birthdays. We don't want to forget the day we marry. We don't want to forget the day we graduated from school. We don't want to forget the day we had our first child and even other children. And we don't want people to forget the day we die. That's why many of us still remember, oh, my father died in 1995. Oh, my father died two years ago. Make dua for my father. Yes. These are days we don't want to forget. By the same token, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, why do you fast on Monday? Why? And he told them, Monday was the day I was born. And Monday was the day I received the Risala, the message from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, do you want to forget about that day? No. No. That's why we cannot forget remembering the Holy Prophet Muhammad. 
Ohebo na beya le ha shemi ya Muhammad. Ohebo na beya ha shemi ya Muhammad. Allahumma ya Rabbi salli ala Muhammad. Ohebo na beya ha shemi ya Muhammad. Wasayi de sadate na beya Muhammad. Ohebo na beya. Hashimi ya muhamu. Jarairu natu muhabi jaye muhamadi. Uwebu nabiya. Hashimi ya muhamu. I love the prophet. I love the prophet from the family of Hashimi in Mecca, in Arabia. I love the prophet Abdelul Khalifi wa Karamudus. The best of our last creation and the most honored. Of his messenger, the son of Abdullah, the son of Amin bin Tuwab. I love him. I love him. And I will continue to remember him. What about you? It's up to you. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the verses I rehearse to you have a common thread from Surah Al Ahzab, Surah Al Imran, Surah Al Fatih, Surah Al Kahf, from Surah Yunus, from Surah Saf. These are verses, all of them connected by one fact. The indisputable fact that Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, Abdallahul Khalik wa Karamu Rusun, is the most honored of the messengers. And of course, the final of Allah's messengers and prophet to Makai. That's what these verses are all about. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Al Hazab. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya yo alazina manu swallu alehi wasalimu taslima. Allah and his angels in heaven, they sent honor, greetings, and salutations upon the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, you who are the believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who follow the example of the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, also send honor, greetings, and salutations to the holy prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And you say you don't want to do that? Well, it's up to you. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, who was Muhammad? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oma Muhammad wa ila rasulun karikalati me kaulihi rasul. Muhammad was not different from any other human being, except that he was a messenger. Just like messengers that came before him, if he were to die or he was killed, will you turn your back against Islam, against Allah's banner wa ta'ala? If you do so, you have not harmed Allah, you have only harmed yourself. Allah will always reward those who are grateful to him. Makana Muhammadun Abba Hadim Mirija Alikun Walaikin Rasulallah Wakatama Nabi Muhammad was not the father of any of you. No, he's not your biological father. No, but he was a messenger. Sent to guide you to the right way. How to live good life here and how to live good life when you meet Allah on the day of accountability. And of course, he was the final in the land of messengership. No one will ever come after him. He is the final. Just say, Muhammadun Rasulullah Wala zina ma'ahun Ashidahun Ala tufa Ruha ma'ahun Bainahun Allahu Akbar Kabir Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was and is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are with him, who follow his way, who believe in Allah, and follow the example of the Prophet, they dislike, they hate disbelief. They are merciful towards one another. My dear brothers and sisters, let's show love to ourselves. They are merciful to one another. And do you know how you know them? They bow, they prostrate. Why? Seeking for the mercy of Allah and the pleasure of Allah. That's why we do so. And you will always find the radiation of that sign on their forehead. Yes. 
That's how you are known. You, see, you, are, you can't claim to be a Muslim if you don't prostrate. And you can't claim to be a Muslim, a believer, if you don't have that radiation in your face. That you follow the example of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Who was the prophet? He was born in the year 570 AD or 571 AD, depending on how you reckon, in the great month of Rabiul Awa, the month we are in now. He was born to the family of Abdullah ibn Abd Muttalib and, of course, Amina bin Tiwahab. Those were the parents, but he was born an orphan. His father passed away before he was born, and six years after he was born, his mother passed away. So he passed from grandfather to uncle in terms of his childhood. It was difficult. We can't deny the fact. It was difficult. But then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy for him. My dear brothers and sisters, at the age of 40, in the year 610 AD, he was commissioned a messenger. Before then, he used to go out to meditate about the creation. What is responsible for this? This cannot be by chance. But on that great evening, it was a different day. The angel came. Ekera, read. Ekera, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Lezi kalako. Kalako li insana amin aleko. Ekera, wara buka li akaramon lezi. Alama abili kalem. Alama li insana amalem yalem. By the time the angel completed that, the prophet had become the most learned of the entire creation of Allah. He was transformed. He became a messenger. He began to spread the message, but people hated him. Yes, still the same thing today. People don't like what is good. And still, people don't even like the message till today, and it's the best message. They disliked him. They didn't want it. They antagonized him. They stigmatized him. They tortured him and his followers. They boycotted him, but they failed. They failed. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, once he has decided, he has decided. Nobody can frustrate the plan of Allah. Oh, my aunt, be Moses. No, none of you can frustrate the plan of Allah. So after a while, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to migrate from Makkah to Medina in the year 622 AD. Since the people of Makkah didn't want the light, Take the light to Medina Yam Homo. And he did. When he arrived in Medina, it was a glorious arrival. They received him with great honor and welcomed him to Medina, provided him accommodation, assisted him, and he began the establishment of Islam which we now know today to be the true Islam. My dear brothers and sisters Islam, it was not so easy. The enemies did not leave him alone. They continued to attack him. They continued to wage wars against him. Allah finally permitted him to go ahead and defend yourself. He spent 13 years in Mecca. He didn't raise hand against anybody. He didn't fight. No. He tolerated all the insults, all the accusations, all the stigmatization, all the beatings. But when he finally got to Medina, Allah one what Allah said, no, enough is enough. They are still crossing the border to come over here. Defend yourself. So he was not a, a lover of fighting. No. He was not a lover of fighting. If he wanted to fight, he would have stayed in Mecca. Islam cannot be promoted with a sword or with gun or with bomb. That's the example we learn from the Holy Prophet Muhammad. The best way to spread Islam is to call people to Islam peacefully. That's the example we learned from Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi Allah told him, He did with us a belly, right? Because he came out more exactly. Hassan. For Jah did him ability here, Hassan. Yes. Call to the way of Allah with the best form of argument and admonition from the Quran. And that will grant you the victory. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, he succeeded in his message. And as a human being, he didn't have unlimited time on this planet. So in the year 632 AD, he passed away. He passed away. And some of us say he also passed away in the month of Rabi Awa. So this month is of special significance to us as believers. Yes, this is the reality, my dear brothers and sisters Islam. Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa passed away. Abdalul Khaliq wa Karamu Rasul. 
if he passed away, the best of creation and the most honored of the messengers did not live here forever. Why do you think you will live here forever? No, your time is coming. Make use of your time right now as you are still alive. Worship Allah, follow the example of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Swallow My dear brothers and sisters, there are some of us when they hear the name of the Prophet, their mouth is locked or their tongue is too heavy. It's too heavy for them to say, Swallow If you do so, you do disservice to yourself. If you keep quiet when you hear the name of the Prophet and you couldn't say, Swallow may Allah bless and have mercy upon him. Then you have done a disservice to yourself. You know why? Because there's a great reward involved. Many of us say we are struggling, we are struggling, we are struggling. We don't know why we are struggling. Here are the solutions to your problem. Simply asking Allah to bless the Prophet and grant him peace can be key for you to enter Jannah. Can be the key that opens your life today. That grants you the joy and the happiness that you need. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by himself, according to the Hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah and in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim and other Hadith of the Prophet, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man Sallallahu Alaihi Marata Wahida Sallallahu Alaihi Biha Hashara. Whoever sends salutation upon me, honor upon me, once, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will send similar salutation upon that person. Ten times. You can imagine that. You can imagine that. Whatever good we do in Islam, Allah will compensate us. Remembering the Prophet is one of the good we need to do every day of our lives by remembering him. That's why we are reminding you today to take advantage of this opportunity to ask Allah, Allah Muhammad, Allah Muhammad, Allah Muhammad, Allah Muhammad, Allah Ibrahim, Allah Ibrahim, Inaka Hamid, Umajib. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Innaka hamidu meji. They asked the Prophet, what is the best way for us to send salutation upon you? He taught us that dua. Yes. He taught us that dua. And Mufasirun and Muhadithun and our Imams, they all agree that whoever uses this Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamid no majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama barak ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamid no majid whoever uses it to begin supplication or to conclude supplication then of course that supplication is granted is that not the medicine you need for your life today? that's what we need therefore my dear brothers and sisters in Islam remember Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala Allahumma ya Rabbi Salli ala Muhammadin Allahumma ya Rabbi Salli ala Muhammad O Sayyidi Sadati Nabi ya Muhammadin O hebu nabiya, Hashimi ya Muhammad. O hebu nabiya, Hashimi ya Muhammad. My dear brothers and sisters, Islam, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to join us with Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in Jannah to free us. Allahumma ajalna ma nabiyina wa habibina wa maulana Muhammadin sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Wa za wajihi wa zuriyati hi wa sahabi hi wa tabi hi wa tabi hi tabi hi bi ihsan ila yaumi din fi jannatul a'ala fi jannatul fridaz. Allahumma jalna ma ala zina ni amuta alayhi mina nabiyyina wa sudikina wa shuhata wa swalihi wa hasna ulai karafika. Before Muhammad passed away, he had a number of wives, including but not limited to Khadija radi alam anha and Aisha radi alam anha. He had seven children. Qasim, Abdullah, Ibrahim, Rukaya, Zainab, Umu Kuthum, and Fatima. They are now anihum ajmayin. Those were the children you had. Just like us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them. And he also left behind two grandchildren, Hassan and Hussein. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them. And join us with them 
in Janna on the day of accountability. Banata Bermina, Naka Aunt, a seminal name of Tuvala, and Yama Lana, a Naka Aunt and Gafurum, one of the Amdi, one of the Amdi, and Shadow Lai 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 Lai